Hey guys, welcome back to At The Table. Sydney here and we are continuing um, about our sweet potato discussion. So we got to hear from Eileen all about her Ag in the Classroom uh, program that she has been doing. And for this stint, she has been focused on sweet potatoes, but that program has tons of other Ag topics that they can teach the kids about um, to continue letting them learn about the different things in agriculture. So uh, what we're making today, um, it's another recipe from the NC Sweet Potatoes website. And um, this is actually two recipes. So we're kind of working our way backwards. We made a dessert last time, um, which was great for Valentine's Day. Maybe you're gonna make those and give them to a, a friend. But this is gonna be a recipe that is more of an entree meal. So we've got two different ones that would be great for lunch or dinner um, that feature sweet potatoes. So the first one we're making is a sweet potato and cauliflower, uh, roasted sweet potato and cauliflower taco recipe. And then we will be making a burger recipe as well in just a little bit. So to start with this one, um, we're actually gonna be using purple sweet potato. So I wanted to feature a different type of sweet potato that maybe we haven't talked about and just talk a little bit about the different types of sweet potatoes. So as Eileen mentioned, there are three main varieties that we grow here in North Carolina and um, purple is one of those varieties, but we don't typically think about purple sweet potatoes or eat them as often. And I think it's just because we're not used to a purple sweet potato, right? So um, as you can see, I have already peeled this, but it is very, very purple right? And it, it will actually stain your fingers. It can stain your hands. So you just need to be mindful of that when you are working with a purple sweet potato. Um, but it's still very sweet. It has that great flavor. Now, a cool thing about sweet potatoes, one thing you might wonder as you begin cutting into it is why does it begin to have these white dots? What does the, do the white dots mean? Well, this is actually the starch and the sugar that's working its way out of the sweet potato as you begin to peel it and when it's working its way out it'll rise to the top any little um, dots that might be uh, pores that might be accessible in that sweet potato it'll work its way up to the top and so you might see that those white little dots and think what is that and also after you touch it your hands might feel a little sticky and that is from the starch and the sugars that are naturally in that sweet potato so that might be a good indicator to tell you, ooh, this is gonna be a really nice, sweet, sweet potato, which is what we want, right? So what I'm gonna start with, and this guy is big and he is tough. What I'm gonna start with is cutting our sweet potato um, into smaller pieces so that we can roast it. If you ever struggle to cut into that, um, you can go just halfway down and cut and then work your way around as I just did. Um, and that will help you to kind of cut through it. That one was really tough. So sometimes that does happen. So same thing here, I'm gonna start in the middle and then switch it over. So I'm just gonna chop this into um, little cubes. This will be going into our tacos. Your key here is to make them a little bit more uniform Now you could definitely use a traditional orange or Covington sweet potato um, that you might be more used to. I just wanted to feature that purple sweet potato to show you something a little bit different that you could do for color and visual and all of that. And this might be fun for children as well because you know, kids like things to be a funky color. If you've got a, a child who's obsessed with the color purple, they would love to work with this and that's a great way to get them to eat their vegetables. So again here, starting in the middle. And then I always cut in quarters and then work my way down. So this was one really big sweet potato. You might, um, you might use one really big one or even um, two small ones just for this recipe. It calls for two sweet potatoes, but this one was so big. 
Um, we might just use this one and then a really small one as well. So I'm just cutting these into a little bit smaller pieces so it won't take quite as long to cook. And we're also thinking about this being in our tacos. So we want it to um, cook and fit into our tacos nicely so it won't be too big or falling out, anything like that. Just gonna move all this over. And then we also have our cauliflower. So I'm just gonna cut my cauliflower into chunks. I have a whole head of cauliflower, which should be plenty. I like to work my way from the bottom, the base, and just kind of pry it with my knife to open it up. Kind of excluding that exterior. And then I just go through and chop this into smaller bite-sized pieces. So while I'm doing this, we will take a quick break and we'll see you guys back here in just one second. Star Communications strives to provide you with the best video services. That's why we invested in cutting edge video equipment to bring you new features such as Cloud DVR, Restart TV, local video on demand, advanced parental controls, and higher quality reception. Unfortunately, these improvements require some changes and existing DVR customers will lose their current recordings. Changes will start the middle of January, so please view all your recorded content. We hope you will love the new Star TV. All right, so we have our cauliflower and our sweet potatoes all chopped up. Um, you can just see how even the purple of the sweet potatoes just really gives it a pretty color. So what we're gonna do next, we're gonna add um, our spices and some olive oil to this. So our recipe calls for about two tablespoons. I'm just gonna drizzle, and if I need more, I'll add more. Um, so what we have spice-wise, we've got some garlic powder. And this is just one teaspoon of garlic powder. So I will sprinkle all of that. And then we have um, some chili powder as well. Just one teaspoon of chili powder. This will help to spice it up a little bit. Um, when we're talking about tacos, we think about kind of a spicy flair. So that will be perfect for our taco flavor. Then we have paprika. And if you have smoked paprika, that will help to give it a really, really good flavor. Um, I love smoked paprika. I just can't always find it. So um, if you do have access to that, I recommend getting some because it does, it just gives it a different, a different flavor that just tastes so, so good. And then we have two teaspoons of cumin. So all of these seasonings are very common, a little bit more popular in any type of taco seasoning. Um, if you look at recipes for uh, homemade taco seasoning, which we have one for our Med Instead of Meds website, um, our taco seasoning, homemade taco seasoning has all of those flavors in it, just of course in different amounts and it is absolutely delicious. So I'll usually make a whole, a big old batch of that and just have it in my, in my pantry for when I decide to make some last minute tacos. All right, so we're just doing salt and pepper to taste. And then you're gonna try your best, probably should've got a bigger bowl, to mix all of this together. Now, that's not gonna work for you. Like it just doesn't seem like it will work for me. We'll just dump it instead and mix it on our pan. So you just want plenty of room to kind of work, work everything around. That way everything seems to have that flavor, all of the seasonings. It's not just on, you know, one piece of something that you're making. And you want a pretty large sheet pan here, just because as you can see, this is a lot. This makes about eight, um, eight tacos. So that's enough for each person to have one taco. 
So it will be a good amount of food. And of course you can adjust that based on how many people you're feeding. Now you could absolutely add, um, this does not have any meat in it, but you could absolutely add chicken. You could add um, beef to this or pork. I think any of that would be delicious and mix that in with your tacos that you're making. So the only thing here, typically when we are uh, making, when we are roasting anything, roasting is when everything does not touch. So we would need probably two pans here to actually make sure not, none of our ingredients are touching. Um, when you be, have everything kind of touching together, it begins to steam. So that is the difference between roasting and steaming. So you want to keep that in mind uh, that to get it a nice char, which is what we really get when we are roasting, then you want to have your stuff spread out a little bit more. For this, you might need to go in and kind of uh, stir it up a little bit so that everything does get a little bit more charred versus if it's by itself, every single side of that piece of, of vegetable or cauliflower, whatever you're roasting, will get that nice char. So if it's touching something, it's not gonna get that. So just keep that in mind. So I'm gonna throw this in the oven. We've got our oven at 400. We're gonna put it in for just about 15 minutes. So I'm gonna throw that in there real quick. And we will check on that in 15 minutes and um, we will add some black beans to it. So we're gonna scoot on over to our next station. This is gonna be a white, um, a sweet potato white bean burger recipe and just sounded really good. I love bean burgers. Um, typically I eat a black bean burger, but a, the sweet potato and white beans sounded really delicious. And it's got a lot of vegetables in it as well. So what we're gonna start with is our beans. And I am just gonna mash these up. Now to make it even easier to mash them, if you put them in the microwave for 30 seconds or so, uh, it will help to soften them up. It will also help to reduce gas. So if you have issues with beans really causing your stomach to swell up, gas up, get really uncomfortable, it will help with that if you heat them through. So I am just gonna mash these up. We will take a quick break and we'll see you guys back here to finish up these burgers. Just because something may work, doesn't mean it's right for your business. Let Star Communications knowledgeable consultants help you customize a hosted voice system that's right for you. Our dedicated experts work with you to understand your business needs and guide you at every step from choosing and installing services to ongoing maintenance and support. Contact Star today. All right, guys, welcome back. So. Um, I have mashed my beans. I did end up throwing them into the microwave just for a few seconds, but you can see how uh, blended they are. I just took, uh, you can either do that with a fork or you can use a, a potato masher um, or anything that will be a good thing, tool to use for mashing. Um, you could also throw that into a blender and puree it if that's just easier for you, um, especially if you have any issues using your hands, you can just throw it into blender or a little contraption if that's easier. So what we're gonna do next, we have a few different things that we are going to chop up um, to mix everything together. So we're basically making our burger mixture and we have three different vegetables that we are adding to this um, in addition to the sweet potato. So the first one is a bell pepper and uh, we are just gonna chop this. Everything is gonna be in a di in like diced portions and we only need about half of a cup um, but this is a smaller bell pepper. It does have a little spot here. I'm going to see if I can shave that off a little bit. But um, we're just gonna cut this into those smaller diced pieces that we can kind of stretch in our burgers um, that won't really take up a lot of room. So finely chopped would be best so you don't have just big chunks of vegetables as you are biting into your burger. 
So I'm gonna go a little bit more fine with this. Now I love that this gives some variety of vegetables and it's in a completely different way. So let's say you made a stir fry one night and you had some bell peppers and celery and green onions left over. You could take that, those same ingredients and turn it into um, this, this burger recipe that would be obviously very different from what a stir fry tastes like. So gives you just some variety and it also gives you a way to utilize those vegetables before they go bad, right? Because we don't want that to happen. So when we're thinking about the different colors of sweet potatoes, there are gonna be some that just don't sound right to use um, in certain recipes. So for instance, when we made those cookies, probably would be a little funny to make them with purple sweet potatoes. Eileen had also made a, she made some kind of, I think it was a chili of some, of some sort, or it was a ham and bean soup. And she brought me some and it had this funny grayish color to it. And she told me that she added a little bit of a purple sweet potato to it. And it pretty much disintegrated just because um, the potato was, you know, so cooked. It was just got really heated. So it pretty much disintegrated, which is great. It will help to make your dish taste a little bit more creamy. So if you are making a soup or stew or something and you want kind of a little bit more creaminess to what you're eating, typically when you add potatoes, whether it's sweet potatoes or white potatoes, it will give it that creaminess. So that is one great way to utilize those sweet potatoes, but she added the purple and it just gave it a funky color. So keeping some of that in mind, a really great time to use those purple ones is especially for roasting. If you're gonna roast them and throw them on top of a salad or throw them on, um, on tacos like we're doing over there um, or put them in a stir fry. Anything like that where they are gonna still remain in those cubes, kind of more of a whole sweet potato, that would be, um, or at least look more similar to a sweet potato rather than being pureed or mashed up. Uh, it would be definitely a good choice to use that purple sweet potato. But if you were doing something where it would give it a funky color, you might wanna stick with your traditional um, orange sweet potatoes. So that's just some different things to consider when you are picking the color of sweet potato that you are gonna be using. So up next we have our celery. So I just like to cut off the ends and chop it right down the middle. If that looks too big still, I'll cut it once more. Remember we want this to be in smaller pieces. Now you could absolutely throw this as well into some type of um, chopper or food processor to cut that into smaller pieces if you don't feel like chopping all of this up. So remembering those knife skills, we are keeping the tip of our knife on the cutting board and then we are working our blade all the way down our celery. Now something like celery is a great thing to start on if you are really wanting to practice your knife skills. Celery is a fun one to cut and to practice with. So even if that's with your children as well, um, that would be a great vegetable to start with. It's not too hard to cut into, like something like a carrot might be a little bit tough to get that knife into it. But it's still, you've got enough length that you're not scared about your fingers and it can be pretty smooth as you're going through. So what I'm gonna do, I'll finish up our celery and then we also have some green onion here. I'm gonna chop that up as well. And we'll see you guys back in just a second to work on our, our bean burgers.
Let's get out of here. Protect what matters most in your life. With security from Star Communications. All right, guys, welcome back. So we have our uh, peppers, our celery, our onions all chopped. I went ahead and I added um, the rest of our mixture to our bowl. So all that we have here is those beans. This is going to be sweet potato that was grated. Um, I just put it into our blender and instead of grating it, just made it a lot faster just because sweet potato can be really tough and it's a lot to grate. So you can throw it into a food processor and just pulse it a few times to get it into those smaller pieces. This is just flour. We have a quarter cup of all purpose flour. And then we have a half a cup of Parmesan cheese and one egg. So that is everything that goes into our burger mixture. So what I'm gonna do next is mix it all up, Ooh, throw some flour around, and then we will actually coat it into panko. So just that step of mixing here. I just wanted to show y'all everything that we added. So lots of orange and green. You still do have that flour to help it bind together and that cheese, which also is a great binder as well so that it will stick together and make kind of more of those uh, burger consistency. And I do have my pan on um, about medium, medium high, and I'll throw some oil in that real quick. And um, then we will patty these up and uh, put them into our pan. So patty is real simple. This does make 12, so just keeping that in mind. We want that to heat up good anyways before we kind of get to it. All right, so that looks like a pretty good size. That's about what we want for our uh, patty size. So I'll just set these on our plate for now until we have a couple ready that we can add them to our pan since that has to heat up anyways. So that'll give it a little more time. And this actually might make, well, it'll probably be about 12. I was gonna say it might be a little more than 12. This is definitely a great way. The, pro the beans give it you some protein, so you still have some good protein here, but it's a great way to um, switch up your entree, your dinner, if you're craving something a little different. We'll just start with maybe five and then I'll finish the rest up later. All right, so what we're gonna do next is to throw these in some panko. So I've got some panko breadcrumbs here, so I'm just gonna rotate it in some panko to get that nice crispiness on the outside, and then I'm just gonna set it into my bowl. So I'll do that with each of those. I said bowl, I meant pan, a saute pan here. And I'm sure if you have an air fryer, I'm sure you could actually air fry these as well. That would give it a really good flavor. I love experimenting with my air fryer and it's an easy hands off. You don't have to stand there and watch it quite as much, which I also love. So just getting that panko all the way around and I'm kind of setting it in my oil. So while those are pattied up, I'm going to rinse my hands really quick. And we will just let that cook for just a minute. And if you need a little bit more oil, you can definitely 
um, add that to it as needed. I feel like we have a good amount for right now on the bottom side. But we want those to cook for about five minutes or so, and then we will flip those onto the other side um, three to five minutes until it's about golden brown. So we're gonna switch over to our tacos next, and I wanna make these with you really quick. So I did go ahead and I pulled our um, sweet potatoes and our cauliflower out. Um, it does look delicious, as you can see. Those sweet potatoes got even darker, and what I also did was added some black beans. So I did one can of black beans um, when it was about, so we did 15 minutes, and then at about five minutes left, um, or sorry, I think we did it for 15 minutes then, I took it out, added my black beans that I drained and rinsed, and then threw that back in the pan and cooked it for about five more minutes. That way our beans could be nice and heated through. So um, what we're gonna do next is we are gonna work on our tacos. So this is just where you start to build your tacos. Now I have two different flavors here in terms of our tortillas I wanted to show you guys. One is just a high fiber brand and this one is not technically whole grain. Um, and it says high fiber, it's still got seven grams of fiber in it, which is very good. Um, it is all insoluble fiber. And as I said, it is not whole wheat. That is not our first ingredient. Um, it's not even our third ingredient. So these are not technically a whole grain. However, they do still have some extra fiber. If you're looking for a little more fiber, this would not be a bad choice. Remember, we want half of our grains to be whole, so we don't necessarily need this to be a whole grain tortilla anyways. The next one does say whole wheat wraps. And this one, the third ingredient is 100% whole wheat flour. So this has 11 grams of fiber, which is 39% of your daily value. The other one has seven. So um, a good bit of a difference in terms of fiber amount. However, there is a size difference of these, of snack size versus um, more of your, I think these are more of eight inch. So we're just gonna build our tortillas now, or our tacos now, very easy. Just throw all of this into our shell here. And then I've got some jalapenos I chopped up. So I'm just gonna sprinkle that. And we've got a, a lime wedge, so we can squeeze that on top. And you can garnish with a little bit of cilantro as well. I love cilantro for tacos. And eat it right up, looks delicious. So that is it for your tacos, that's super simple. You could also add some sour cream, um, a little bit of cheese if you wanted to go that route. This is fully a vegan option, so if you do not eat cheese or dairy, you wouldn't wanna, of course, um, add cheese, but if that's not an issue for you, you can absolutely add that on there as well. I'm gonna come over here and flip our burgers, and I'll show you what those look like once they are all done. So these look beautiful. They've got a really nice golden brown to them. And they're actually sticking together pretty well. So um, it depends on your mixture, uh, how well it kind of stuck, but I feel like this did really well with kind of staying all together um, nicely. So that is it for our, our, uh, our episode today. So enjoy these, they look delicious. I can't wait to try them next, and I hope you will too. I hope you enjoyed All About Sweet Potatoes. Got one more, we're gonna talk about breakfast next. So we're working our way from dessert to breakfast, and we will see you guys back next week for At The Table.